This is our first teaser session, so I'm so excited to have you over. Um, unfortunately, we're going to wait for Mother Bishop. She'll arrive later on, so she'll come and join us when she comes back. But for now, we've got our two other panelists that are here, and I can't wait to introduce them to you. So I'm going to briefly speak to you guys about Ladies Let's Talk and the vision and why we're doing this. Um, Ladies Let's Talk, well, the foundations of it started in 2013. But now we've got it's time to bring it up to life because of the responses we've been getting for people. And basically it's a place that is, um, we're trying to create a place for women to have something to talk about. We have gone to so many different events and um, after the event we have ladies coming to speak to us about different pro problems, about different issues. And then we thought, huh, every woman has got an issue and every woman has got a problem. So why not create something or platform we can all come together and discuss these issues and then find a way to solve them and find a way to bring restoration to them and a he sort of a healing process for them and we understand that so many women have gone through so much in their lifetime everyone's got a different experience and everyone has got a different story so we just want to basically share those stories and discuss with you today okay so i hope you have fun we're going to have some interactions later and you know we're going to have some questions and answers so i hope you um iv is going to be going around um collecting names for people that want to ask questions within the time and also listen up great advice will be coming through your way we've got two women who are going to sit with me so far and each woman has got a different story and a different way of looking at life so i hope that will help you and another thing like i said you also have your story so so don't feel bound to hold your story in okay when we go around to the question and answers feel free to raise a hand and tell ivy and then she'll just let us know of them of the questions all right thank you so much all right thank you so much okay i'm going to introduce my first panelist this woman is very special you know um the, I've seen her work. She's going to talk a lot more about her work by herself, but I'm just going to tell you that I've seen what she does, and it's amazing. I was touched by um, by the people that she's moving, and you know, she's working with a lot of women within different situations. For example, women um, that are on drug abuse. What she does is she doesn't just help them come out of like you know just that mindset of you're a drug addict let me help you give you the right things to come out of it but she makes them feel like women she reminds them that you're a woman she reminds them that you know what as much as you've been through this passage don't worry you're still a woman let me help you look pretty let me help you feel like a woman and so they're con rebuilding their confidence all right so this lady her name is erin copeland please help me welcome erin copeland <laughs> Yourself. Uh, yeah, so uh, I've been working with um, within the substance misuse services for the last is this on? <laughs> Sorry, for the last uh, ten years. Um, I currently work with young people with substance use concerns, um, but my passion is is working with women. Um, I have been trying to set up some groups for women, um, as as here it said, with with substance use concerns. The aims of the group, uh, the groups, are to empower women um, and to help enable them to to feel like women. From res some research that was carried out in 2008 um, by the Drug Action Team to find out what women wanted from substance use services, um, it was quite prevalent that women were quite often made to feel like another drug user and not a woman. Um, so. The idea is to, to empower them, to give them help to give them life skills, guidance in life, um, you know, make them, help them to become aware of what services are available to them in the city, um, have guest speakers coming in um, sort of once once a month or, or you know, if we're really going to base the groups on what the women want from the treatment, uh, from, from the groups. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank nice you so much. I can't wait to hear more from you. All right, guys. Our next guest is Esther. She's like my sister. Um, 
Esther and I, yeah, our story is very, <laughs> is very goes way, well, not way back, but for us it feels like way back. But anyways, I'm gonna let her introduce herself to you. She's a young lady, she's aspiring to do greater things in the kingdom of God. And I understand that every woman we're going to touch, not everybody is a believer. So I like to bring people that also believe in God and also other women that, you know, not everyone, like I said, is a believer. So I don't close um, the platform with just the believers and not for everybody else. So she's a believer like I am and she's going to tell us her story from her side. Can we welcome Esther Gray, please? <laughs> And um, I've been through a lot of abuse, addiction, and um, the reason why I have a ministry is because I realized that there's a lot of women that have been abused. A lot of women, you know, are into so many addictions, but they, they can't speak up. You know, so I've been giving the assignment to just, you know, tell women, okay, I've been through this, I've been through abuse, I've been through so many addictions, and here yeah, I'm alive, I'm strong, I'm healed. You know, it's okay to say, I'm in church, I'm a Christian, and I've done this, this, this. You know, I've been into wrong relationships, I've done an abortion before, or I was dealing with so many stuff. You know, because one of the reasons why, I, I, I've been a Christian when I was young, but I was in sin, I was living in sin. And the church I was attending, at, you know, as I then, they were condemning me. Because I opened up to say, okay, I need help. Yeah. And the next week I came to church, everybody knew what I said, everybody knew my business. Yes. And they were, they, they put me in a place where I felt you know, alone and lonely and that just drove me into more things. Yeah. So that was where the, 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 the need to actually open up and to be able to listen to people and love them came about. So what I do, I speak at events, I yes. share my story, I yes. share my testimony and I obviously help people, young women, through my experience, you yes. know, that it's okay, you know, I have someone, I know about someone that yes. can heal you. Yes. Because people see me now and they can't imagine the things that I've done before. Of course, you, you know, don't look like you've been through anything. Yeah, but it's the power of his love, of, of God's course. love, so that's what I'm actually sharing to people. Wow. That God's love is able to transform yes. inside us. So that's oh. what I do, yeah. Thank you so much. So this for our ladies at our house engines those that joined us as well um so we're going to begin with a few questions i'm going to basically um, say a question ask them something and then they're going to respond in their way so don't feel like you have to tell us what you feel we think you want us to say to us okay speak from your heart and tell us from your experience as well because I'm, i've titled today taking off your mask i believe if i take off my mask and i show you my scars i can also bring healing to you because i show you the healing that i've just gone through and how i got my healing and that can bring healing to your soul and to your heart so taking off your mask ladies are you ready taking off your mask okay so the first question is um, I want to start with this one because solely because um, every every woman says that they are this specific things I'm going to ask you. So I want to hear your definition of it and um, kind of tell us a little bit more. What do you think and or what can you say? What is a strong woman? <laughs> you know, because I've come across a lot, of, a lot of ladies that say I'm a strong woman. I can make it. I am this and that. But when you really sit down, okay, what's a strong woman? <laughs> I will define a strong woman as someone that has come to own their scars. Okay. Come to agree, okay, this is my weakness. Yes. I need help. Yes. A strong woman is not someone that will say, because I, I, I remember, yes. I used to say I was very strong. My definition for being strong was hiding. Yes, that's you know, right. Bringing other people down to feel strong. Mm. You know, having to act like I'm, I'm okay, I'm fine. Yeah. I'm not eating, but, but then you'll be really hurt. No, I'm not. I'm not okay. Mm. Being strong is being able to say, hey, I need help. Yes. I'm broken, I need help. Yes. This is where I have this issue. Please yeah. help me. Yeah. And being able to take the help, yeah. being able to receive it. Okay. Yes. That's what wow. Well, I came across this definition, actually, of a strong woman. And it really touched me. Say, a strong woman believes that she is strong enough to face her journey, but a woman of strength, has faith that it is in the journey that she will become strong. Does that make sense? Shall I repeat that? <laughs> it says a strong woman believes that she is sorry, a strong woman believes that she is strong enough to face her journey. Yeah? But a woman of strength 
has faith that it is in the journey that she becomes strong. What do you think about that? I think, I think that makes sense. I think it's very important to um, for women to to feel um, comfortable with how how their life is. Yeah. You know, accept that. You know they've made some some decisions that, that might not have been the right decisions, but to accept that that is that it is what it is, yeah. and and you're not going to change that, yeah. and to be comfortable within yourself. Of course. Wow. And another one I came across was the strength of a woman is not measured by the impact that all her hardships in life have had on her but the strength of a woman is measured by the extent of her refusal to allow those hardships to detect her and who she becomes mm. anyone in the audience if, if there's something to say about that does anyone want to add to that about a strong woman anyone Uh, hello everybody, uh, just think uh, a strong woman, um, it's when you get hurt, you don't live in that hurt, but you look at yourself and just be positive and do what is right according to what you believe God has created you to be and you just carry on despite every, everything everybody else can say. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. The reason why I picked this is because I, well, from my, I'm only 23 years old, and at universities, I've, I came across a lot of women that were, they were growing up into womanhood, and then they always used to say, I'm a strong woman, I can face this. But really, when you sat down with them, they were just broken pieces. It was just like a face they were putting on to hide behind what they were really going through. And then I thought, okay, so what is really a strong woman? And I thought a strong woman for me is showing your scars, sharing your story. That shows your strength because you're not, you're not worried about what people will call you or say about you, but you're willing to share your story to bring healing to other women. And I think a strong woman as well is one who can help other women become better. Because sometimes as women, we tend to want it for ourselves. We tend to want to do things for ourselves and make sure I get there before you. But if you can take the time to stop and look back and help other women, I think that's a strong woman as well. I mean, we'll have all these definitions, but I've got one more that I'm going to say. And it's a simple one. A strong woman knows who she is. Yes. That's it. You know who you are. Regardless of what you have been through or regardless of what you have faced, you know who you are. So no mountain can come and stop you because you know who you are, you're confident in yourself and you're confident in what you can do. Eh? Okay? All right then, my next question I want to discuss to you is how is it important or how important is it for women to know their worth? And how can they begin to accept it and being worth it? If that makes sense. How can they begin to accept being worth it? Because sometimes... As women, we deserve so much more than we get, but we tend to settle. I think um, it's very difficult to answer that question because um, the media pay, uh, has a lot to answer for, in my opinion, <laughs> for um, women not feeling, they're having, you know, body body image yeah. issues or. Um, you know, there's a general sort of consensus of how you should look, mm -hmm. and then women are often criticised for being too thin or too fat or yeah. not looking pretty when they've gone out without their makeup on. And, <laughs> and, and women have a lot to live up to mm. to the media. Um, so it's, I think it's difficult to, um, it is difficult for women to, to have that sort of sense of worth. But I think. It, but then again, we live in a society where the media is really in control, so how can you not? then follow the media if that's the world we live in now. Everything you see before you dress, maybe with me, I was always inspired by something I saw on TV to dress this way. So how can you then not use that to help you become who you are? How can you like turn away from that and then define your own worth? Um, I think it's, uh, I've had a tough journey myself. Okay. Um, and I have battled addiction myself. Um, and I think from learning from 
from my, the, the mistakes that I did make um, and actually accepting, as I say, accepting what happened um, enabled me to become stronger um, and, and able to support other, other women and other people with, with, with their, you know, substance use and, you know, and different aspects as well. Um, and, and then I suppose yeah, you do have success stories in the media, so yeah, you can use it to, to your advantage. Um, you know, when people have, have battled with addictions or, you know, other issues, yeah, yeah. Um, and, they're, and they're successful, I think that can, that can help be inspire be. somebody, yeah. yeah exactly. What would you say? I'm a Christian, so I believe that your identity is in Christ. Okay. Because um, if you, so, you can say you're a Christian, you believe yeah. that identity is in Christ. Yeah. What about you're teaching somebody who yeah. doesn't even know Christ, and they don't really care for Christ? How would you help them first get there? Because sometimes we can go and say Christ, 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 but yeah, yeah. show them the love first yeah. and feel, make them feel, like understand who they are. But get them to know that who they are. How how would you tell somebody about their worth without? Not saying remove the Christ out of it, but yeah. I'm not a Christian. Mm -hmm. I want to know you're trying to teach me about my worth. How yeah. would you do that to me? Okay, first of all, when you when you are insecure, yeah, you don't feel there's nothing. Even if you watch TV, watch media, look at Beyonce or whoever you are inspiring to be like, yeah. you will never fit into it. Okay. Well, I've come to understand our identity in Christ. Yeah. You don't need to find acceptance because you've already been accepted when you know but you don't need to find acceptance because yeah. you've already been accepted yeah okay when you know that you've been accepted in christ yeah. that okay there's someone that loves you even if the world does not okay you know when you come to believe that and receive that there's this this boldness this this self-love that you have because with me i dealt with insecurity i dealt with it so bad that i wanted to be like people i wanted people to just accept me i was looking for acceptance okay. everywhere I had to wear the best clothes, the best hair, just because I wanted someone, someone to accept me. Yeah. You know, but from when I understood and realized that, okay, there's someone, someone that loves me regardless of what I do or what I've done. There's someone, somewhere that has already accepted me, even if I do wrong or do right. His name is Jesus. He loves me. Okay. You know, the more I begin to believe that, I didn't need to be someone else. I didn't need to wear short clothes, tight clothes. You know, too much to feel, to, feel, okay. to fit in, because okay. I know there's someone. That's another way. It's yeah. fitting in. We tend, especially the younger generation. I saw this in university. There's a specific look that goes out, and everybody starts doing it because they feel like that's the specific look that gets you the guy. Yeah. Or if you wear this, that's that. That's what attracts attention to you. That's what gets you to become somebody. You know, do you know what I'm saying? So it's fitting in. That's another problem. People want to fit in instead of becoming individuals. Because I believe, as a human being, you are your own person. You don't need to become like me to get to where you need to be to get. Or I can share my story with you and help you and show you, share you like my success story, so you can know how I got there. But not to become me because we have no longer like people are losing the individuality. They're becoming like other people. What do you think about it? Like, especially with the young generation, they're becoming the same. They're thinking the same, striving for the same things. Like, I believe there's not enough people going out there and telling them, like, listen, be individual. Listen, you're beautiful as you are. Don't worry about this. You know, you are who you are. You don't need to be somebody else. Yes, because I feel the need. People want to fit in. People want exactly. acceptance. That's the reason why I want to make my hair like, you know, someone else. That's the reason why I want to wear this particular dress. I want someone to accept me. Mm -hmm. No one dresses up just because I just want to look good. No, we all want to want to be accepted. Yeah. But when you know that you, you've already been accepted and loved, mm -hmm. you will not need to be someone else. Okay. I don't have to. I remember... <laughs> I remember years ago, I needed to shop in a particular shop. I needed to go Primark. It has to be somewhere big because yeah. I, I needed yeah. you to see what I was wearing. You won't be able to tell me so that you can, dress. You, you, yes, so that you can accept me because of what I'm wearing. Because mm. I tried so many stuff, you know, it wasn't yeah. working. So I needed to Why look don't, good. How are you now? Like now? I don't need. I don't need to. I can leave my hair, my natural hair. I don't need to be anyone. Yeah. Because I've come to know who that who I am in Christ. Yeah. Because there's no, who I am in Christ yeah. that I'm, I've been accepted. Just the way I am. Are, yeah. There's someone that thinks I'm beautiful. Yeah. Someone thinks I'm smart, okay. even if I don't feel like. Because even if you try to, you know, feel good, there's okay. still days that you not feel good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. Wow. I'm gonna get a little bit deeper now. That was just a little bit of um, the 
the taste decision. You know, I'm, I, 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 what, how can I say this? I believe that I am a mirror, right? Hear me right. I believe I'm a mirror. And what, by saying this, I mean, if you look at in my life, or if I look at your life, we have some sort of similarities. Not saying the same experiences, but you've had pain and I've had pain. You've had troubles and I've had troubles. And I'm going, what, what I want to go to next is talking about women helping other women. How do we get to the point of actually freely and without any conditions help each other? Because we all want to strive to get some, somewhere. It could be within your health. I mean, women want to lose weight. It could be within raising children. I don't have any, but some people have. And you know, sometimes you have these teenagers that are troublesome. I know I was one of them. <laughs> and you know, just getting that advice on how do you do it, or sometimes even with dressing. Sometimes as sisters, we need to teach other how to dress because you can think you look good, but yeah, there's some improvement that can be done. But we tend to leave them to look how they look and, and just say, yeah, you look nice, but behind their back. With this, and did you see what she was wearing? So how can women help each other become better? How can we begin that process? Because I believe that's needed in this time for women to unite, help each other, and just not step over each other, but lend a hand and bring somebody up and not climb the ladder by yourself. Um, I think it's, every, every woman, as you say, you know, we've, we've all had to battle some kind of issues with, with our, within our lives. Um, and I think it's, it's important to to recognise what those issues are, okay. um, in order for, for, to get the right guidance and support. Mm. It's it's a it, it's really difficult because everybody has had such different experiences, and oh, although we felt all felt pain, yeah. it's it's a different pain, and it, and people deal with things in a different way. Mm. You know, some turn to substances, some turn to. Um, I don't know. You know, you know, some people will make better of a situation, whereas others can't deal with it so well. So I think it's really important that we recognise what ha what is important to women yeah. or to a particular woman, yeah. and then give them the right guidance for for their needs. Okay. So tailoring their, yeah, their yeah, yeah, you know, the, yeah. their the services around their of needs. Of course, of course. And yourself. Yeah, I, f I feel you have to be whole first before you can help Wow, someone you have else. to be whole first before yeah. you can help somebody else. Okay. You, you, you have to be, because if I'm not, because I, like I said before, I had to talk someone down to feel good. To feel good, yes. So I know you're dressing in a particular way I don't like, but I will call someone and say, see what she's wearing. At least I'm not as bad as she is yeah. to feel good. Yeah. So you have to be whole okay. and you have to understand and know how much God loves you so you can be able to love others because okay. I cannot teach you if I don't know love if I've not come to understand love because we have to learn how to love other people yeah. that was what we, that's what's going to inspire us to help yeah. Yeah. so I'm not helping you because I want to receive something from you yeah. which is fear okay. I'm not trying to it's what, sorry? fear, fear. Okay. Yeah. so I'm, I'm not trying to do something for you yeah. because I want to receive but when I love you because I'm whole mm -hmm. I'm whole first mm -hmm. then I love you yeah. I would do anything for you. When I wow. see you wearing something that's wrong, wow. I'll correct you in love. Not, so not, it not, comes back to the basis of love. Yeah. Like you were saying, identifying first the situation, this is what I've been through, accepting that you've been through that, whole, yeah. and then be whole, yeah. and then learn to love. And then, yeah. That's amazing. I think that's a, that's a great teaching. It's, it comes back to love, the unconditional love. Because sometimes we tend to pretend a lot. There's so much pretending within the women society, if you can call it that, within that group. We tend to, to do things like, oh, actually, sorry to disturb this. Do you want to introduce Mother Bishop? She's arrived. Please take a seat. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Um, may you just tell us a little bit more about yourself? We know you're the first lady of DFMI, and we know you've worked with so many ladies, and uh, you've got so much experience. So I'm glad you're here because we needed an elder, you know, experience. Someone who's been through so much and seen so much, and has given so much advice to other women. So just a little bit about yourself that you want everybody to know. Hello. 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 Um, I'm Miles Mel and Pia. 
Um, just clocked 46. Really? Yes. <laughs> um, I've been working with the women since uh, 1997. Wow. Counseling, yes. praying, and do, doing all sorts of things. Yeah, qualified accountant. Wow. By profession. Yes. That's me. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. So far, we're just basically speaking about women helping other women. We're trying to identify the importance in doing that. And how can we get to that place where you can be comfortable to help other women? And then we came across um, some of the answers we're given here. She's identifying the situation you've been through and accepting that, yeah, I went through this. And then knowing yourself and understanding that I love in yourself first and to give love unto others. So what do you have to say about that topic? Women helping other women. How important is it? And how can you get to the place where you're comfortable to be able to release yourself to help others or other women specifically? Uh, helping women, really, if, if you have to start with a, a thing is, who are you to help who? Yeah. Yeah. So if I don't know myself, I will not be able to help my friend. Yeah. Firstly, I need to know myself. What is it that I have? What is it that is missing? What is it that is troubling me? such that when time comes for another person to be helped, I'll have the ideas. And not only that, you also need to know who you are in God. That's a part. If you know you're a chosen person who is able to give good counsel to another lady, then you're able to, by the grace of God and through the wisdom of God that he gives us. Wow, thank you so much. Um, you know, with, the, no, with women helping other women, I want to come then to the next um, topic I want to talk about. And that is, um, you know, women tend to wear faces every day. I used to do that a lot, especially to my mother. You know, I would wear a face to kind of like avoid my, my mother knowing what I was going through because I felt like she didn't understand or like, I feel like if I showed it, maybe I'll get in trouble that I've done this. So I would wear a face, I'm fine mom, hi, yes. And she knew somehow that there's something wrong. So it's bringing me to my next topic, mothers and daughters. How is that relationship very important? Because with me and my mother, I, um, we had a, in other people's face or eyes, we had a great relationship, but we had our troubles that we went through. And I came to understand that as my mom, I had to respect it because that's the way that it goes. I have to do as she says, I have to clean the house, I have to do cooking, you know. But then when it came, when I grew up a little bit more and I was going through life, I found it difficult to approach her and ask for advice or just talk to her about some girlfriend stuff. I tend to go to my friends for that. And then when I, well, at this age, I realized they didn't have enough knowledge or wisdom to advise me. But if only I knew that then, I would have probably trusted my mom. But I feel like, oh my God, I'm gonna get in trouble. Oh my God, she's not gonna understand. Or she'll just say, no, you can't do this. So how, how can women, I mean, mothers and daughters develop a stronger relationship? Because I know this is not only in our household. It's in other households where mothers and daughters strive to have that relationship, but they keep clashing. So much happens in between and they keep bouncing heads or misunderstanding. Or when you become a woman like I have, two women in the house. That's difficult. You can't, you know, because you're thinking, I have my ways of doing things. And she's like, no, this is my house. You abide by my rules. So how can mothers and daughters develop such a relationship? And how can we, you know, what advice can you give towards that topic? And I think um, a very similar relationship yeah. with my mum. Um, we're, we're extremely close. Yeah. Um, I think one of the issues that, that I certainly had growing up was that I was fearful of hurting my mum. Exactly. Because if I was hurting, she was hurting. Yeah. And there was a particular time um, when something had happened and my mum doesn't cry and she cried and it hit me yeah. and I thought, do you know what this isn't just me this yeah, is hurting yeah, this yeah, is my mum as well yeah so without without wanting to hurt your mother mm -hmm. it's a very difficult situation to be in because you want to be close yes and you want to be best friends yes. and you know tell each other everything mm -hmm. but it's not that easy because no, you, you you're know, right there is that sort of fear factor of, of 
I think that's what we're trying, to, we're trying to get rid of that fear factor. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I don't know if it's like something that we were told or grow up knowing, but you just have this fear of your mom. Like, <coughs> as much as you can be close, but there's just something, a barrier there that just not, doesn't allow you to get close enough to just say, Mom, I've done this wrong, or Mom, this is my life. This is who I really am. And then, and then just remove that face and then just show your true self. Yeah, myself and my mom, we didn't have a relationship <coughs> yeah. growing up because it was really bad. I actually hated my mom. Wow, yeah, that's a strong was, word. Yeah, then, yeah. but now, <laughs> but now we're very close. But it was really bad because she was trying to pass a message across to me, but in fear. When you're trying to train up a child in fear, you will lose the child. Wow. Because all you'll be doing is trying to don't do yeah. this, don't do this. So she would say things like, if, you, if a man touches you, they're going to get pregnant. <laughs> so that. But yeah, but so when a man, when I kissed the guy the first time, nothing happened. I said, okay, so who's lying then? So she was now their enemy. To you. Yeah, so she tried every time. She was, she was trying to love me, but in fear. She was trying to protect so me. She was scared of you actually messing making up. Making a mistake, but in the wrong way. Was, she was driven by fear. To look after me, so I think the key thing is even when you're looking after your kids or trying to train up your girls, don't do it in fear because it shows that you're doing it. If you're trying to don't, I don't want to get pregnant. I don't want to make a mistake in life. You, you. But then they're trying to protect you. So how is that? They just protect you from the life because they know that if you go this route, this is what you're gonna fall into. I have maybe their story. They've probably been past that, so they don't want you to go through the same things they went through. So how? Then can you say that her doing it in fear because she's yeah, only because, advising? Yeah, but you need to observe the child because even the thing she was she thought I was doing, I wasn't even doing it. So because she yeah. thought that was this is the way girls behave. Yeah. So if I'm behaving this way, I must be going that, that way. way. Oh yeah, I had that. So Sorry about and it was not even it was not even <laughs> truth and that it was not even it. I just was a dancer, I love to dance, I love church. Yeah. So I'll come back from church five o'clock and say, we're going to the hospital. Oh yeah, come, let's go. Let, let me check if you're still a virgin. So the fear of, I don't want you to make a mistake. So just blindfolded everything. So, so like destroy your relationship, did that yeah. push you away? Yeah, it was really bad. Wow. Really bad. Can we hear from the mother? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you spoke of a mask. Yes. And the girls would put up a mask mm -hmm. as they approach their mothers. Yeah. That is very common. It's normal. Yeah. But then as parents, what is so important is to develop a relationship to the girl child yes. while it's very young. Mm. As my sister is saying, the mom was trying to protect her, yeah. but with a, a harder way. Mm -hmm. There's another way you can do. The Bible is so clear. It says train a child in the way you'd want them to go. Oh, yeah. And when they grow, they won't depart. So teaching somebody in fear just develops a defensive mechanism. Yes, that's true. But I, I, I feel if I have to train a child, a girl child, because we, we girls, yeah. <laughs> I'm not talking about boys, but if for both uh, girl or boy, mm. tell them the truth. Mm. Win their trustworthiness. Okay. You don't have to doubt them. Yeah. If they say, I didn't do it, whether you, you think they did it or not, Try to trust them. Thank you for that. Too. Try to trust them. Thank you for that. If they are lying, it will show. Yeah, yeah. But if they're walking away and saying, oh, you know what, mom, I don't do what you think, and you say, that's what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Because of the group. Yes. We may not trust the girls because yeah. of the group they're in. Mm -hmm. So the association, try to explain to them what does having a wrong frame do to you. Yeah. So if, if they're wearing a mask, a mother would definitely tell my child is not themselves. You can wow. easily pick it up. Another thing you say there, you know, it's like when the mom can trust that what you're saying is is the actual truth. Because I'm I had a group of bad friends, and to be honest, some of them now, you know, they went their ways and they did whatever they did, and I'm glad that I'm here right now. But when my mom used to tell me then, I would think she was just hating on me. I thought she was just destroying my fun. She didn't want me to have the, the friends I want to have. I wanted to go party with them sometimes, you know. But when I, when I said, Mom, can I go out to party? She was like, no, you're not going out. 
and what, everything that happens. I'm, I'm, I won't be doing those things. But hey, she was protecting me from the environment. But it's only now that I recognize that it was the environment she was protecting me in from. And but I wanted to be there because I thought everybody was doing it. And another thing that my mom always used to say that she used to hurt me, or I used to just want to slam the door, <laughs> was because I said so. Because I'm your mom, and she'll shut the conversation. That's it. We can't go anywhere further than that with that conversation. She will close the door, and if you try to open your mouth, I'm done talking. Really? So maybe just to cut you short. Yeah. You know, at times as a parent, I know what is good for you. Okay. I can shut you off because I know you're going the wrong direction. But the best thing is to give them, you know, a listening ear. Have them talk. When they are done, try to question whatever they've been talking about. That's how good you can get them up. Yeah. Because if I say, you are not going, and you ask me to say, but why? I say, because I've said so. That's not a reason. I should be able to explain, Yourself. listen from what you are telling me. Mm -hmm. At the end of it, come up with a conclusion. As I'm saying, you are not going, I must be able to provide some evidence to say, if this would happen, then you end up in the wrong way, yes. doing the wrong yes. stuff, going the wrong places. Yes. So mother, child, for, for us to remove the mask, we must be able to communicate. Okay. Free communication is okay. needed. Wow. I think um, it's, it's important for parents and mothers to be honest mm -hmm. with, with their um, daughters. Be, yeah. My mum was very honest with me about her past mm -hmm. um, and about you know things that wow. she had done in the past yeah um, which didn't stop me making mistakes mm -hmm. but it made me more aware yeah um, and also it built up the trust so that when I did need her she was there and I was able to talk to her mm -hmm. so I you know it's it it's invaluable mm -hmm. that you know you have that trust wow. Thank you. Um, talking with trust um, you know I am glad that I have a mother but I've come across other women or girls who don't have mothers. And when I sit down with them to say, okay, this is the way that I was raised, or this is the way you do things, if, or if I see them doing the wrong thing, and I'm like, no, 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 don't do it that way, don't dress that way. They look at me like, but I don't, this is what I know. And sometimes they tend to be judged. Those ladies that don't have mothers, they tend to be judged a lot because what they know is what they can only do. You can only do things according to the knowledge you have. You can't really go beyond what you don't know. So, you know, I'm, I remember going to one, um, there was a youth event that happened, and then the, there's a girl who came. She was dressed inappropriate, if I say that, because if you sat down, you can, you can see everything. If you was to bend over, <laughs> you could see everything. So she was approached by one um, of the ladies, and she was like, no, girls don't dress that way. You do it, and she was kind of like, hushing at her. And then she turned around, she was like, this is what I know to dress like, which brings me to my next topic. Um, how can <coughs> mothers, for example, I'm in a for a mother, how can you extend your hand to those that have no mothers? Because they're crying out for other, to, to just have that mother figure with, for, in their lives, especially growing up to becoming a woman. You need to be taught about marriage. You need to be taught about how to dress, how to present yourself, how to speak, you know, how can mothers extend that hand? Because I know there are mothers here who have children, but probably in their circle, somebody may not say it or show it, but there's always a motherless daughter there that needs a mother. How can you identify such girls and how can you extend your hand to help them? <laughs> um, I think if you're a mother, you're not just a mother to your own kids. You're a mother for anyone. You must be available to anyone. So how do we get to those that don't have mothers? You know, it all goes back to relationship. You try to get this girl. They don't have a mother. Can we build such a relationship whereby you talk to them, not really on issues, but just a relational talk? Today I greet them. Tomorrow I greet them. The other day then I go deeper. We go further. If we do that for quite some time, they develop some confidence in me, and I'll be able, if I were to correct them, they'll be receptive to the correction. So as mothers, 
We are not mothers to our own biological kids. Mm -hmm. We are a mother to anyone that we come across. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how old they are, yeah. but as long as they need our input, yeah. it will be very good that we extend it to them. Okay. okay. Wow. Wow. That's that's really good. Um. You know what? The the main thing that I've been burning to speak about is a lot of women or well, ladies that I know of. Um, they um, came from a home where there was no father and um, when I sat down with them and then I asked them like why do you think this specific way or why do you do the things you do and then they were like because I just want love I'm just looking for love is that really the reality of coming from a fatherless home that you just yearn or you just want love because they tend to look for it in other places and I'm, I'm, I know people that have now they just for them, sex for them is love. As long as they just get that pleasure, they feel like, yeah, as long as that man is holding me, yeah, this is love. Is that the reality of things coming from a fatherless home? I don't think so. Um, perhaps in some cases, but yeah. um, I mean, my, my dad is around, yeah. uh, but my mum and dad split up when I was very young, so he, and he moved away. Um, so I didn't see him very often. So we had never had a very close relationship. Um, I'm actually single, and and I'm happy to be single. And I feel like I don't need a man in my life. <laughs> so, Forever. Not for the time being. You know, you can say never. <laughs> but at the moment, I'm very I'm very happy with my life, and I'm very comfortable with just being on my own um, and having my sort of independent life. So yeah. I don't... Okay. Wow. Um. The reason why. I, uh, go on. Uh, maybe you just you come in as she's saying, not having a dad doesn't mean there's no dad there. Okay. If you're in a society, there are men, elderly men that are there that you can tend to. So um, the, the, the good bit is, as I was saying, a mother is a mother not to their own biological. Even the fathers in the house, wherever they may be, they can be helpful. But then you, you spoke of the, a, a girl looking for love because yes. there wasn't a dad in the house. Yes. You know, the difference uh, I've noticed, girls are always for their fathers. <laughs> they want to cling to dad. And the yeah. boys who cling to their moms. Yeah. So I'm sure those, that girl grew up in a resentful way because mom and them are not clicking that bit. I'm not saying they are not understanding each other, but they can't click to that point because naturally you discover that all the girls would want to to get to dad, yeah. not to mom. Yeah. You see, so that's a part that they are missing. <laughs> but that does not drive them to going to find a man who can give of them course, love. Of course, of course, of course. I'm like, I'm a daddy's girl, up to now. Like, I love my dad. Like, we're best friends. We can have the most amount of jokes and get in each other's faces. Mom, that, that's your dad. I'm like, mm, just having a joke. <laughs> but mom is so, she's with my mom. Thank God that when, as I grew up, I then wanted to learn what is a mother and a daughter relationship and I allowed myself to flourish within that and now we have a great relationship and I also have a great relationship with my father so it's nicer that way um going on to the next topic um which I think I struggled with a little bit in my life is um the pain of your troubles getting over them because um there are so many things that everybody goes through I have my stuff that I've been through but now, when you come to the place of overcoming them and accepting what you have been through and starting over to feel good again, but that pain tends to remain. And when some, anything can trigger it, like something can happen and you just, it just triggers it and you're just like, oh my God. Like, how can we, how can I guess, tune your mindset to um, start getting over that pain so that you can live a free life? Because my pain could be different to your pain, but it's still pain. So how can we begin to move on from that pain and begin to live a life that's fulfilling? Because we tend to hold on to a lot of things as women. Like, if something happens, yeah, we can forgive you, but we're not forgetting, you know? And in the, in the, in the years to come or the months to come, you will always remember that, and that remains with you. How do you get over your pain of your past? The pain of your past. Um, for... <coughs> I think for, for you to still feel hurt yeah. or still get angered because maybe someone reminded you of your past, then you've not, you're not over it. 
you know, completely over it. But in my mind, I'm over it. It's just like something happens to trigger it. You're not over it. How? Because in love, there is no fear. When you're perfected in God's love, when you're perfected in love, there's no room for fear. Okay. And so if, uh, if you find yourself feeling down, that means your mind, your, your, your mind is processing something that is wrong. Your mind has gone somewhere. The enemy can bring a thought to you. But when you think about that thought, it can make you feel down. So when you change your mindset, when you choose to think about good things, like Bible says that whatsoever things that are good, pure, think on those things. It will bring peace to you. When you find yourself thinking down, no, when you find yourself feeling down, it just shows you where your mind is. But then again, you know what? I, I've sat down with um, with a lady. Um, she was abused, sexually abused yeah. from a young age. Yeah. She went through it all. I mean, like, abuse to the point that she was so scared of men. Mm -hmm. She didn't want any guy to come yeah. close to her. But then again, she thought, okay, now I know. She goes to an age, she's ready to get married and everything to have kids. She felt like, yeah, she can be with the guy. Yeah. But then she still holds on to that pain like she still holds on to the pain of what she what she went through so she takes it out on him okay i was abused at the age of eight eight, eight yeah. years old yes sorry my mic is thank you i was abused at the age of eight and it was my case was very severe because i had um so many people living in my house and men the guy that abused me was over like he was very old he would call me to come and sit on his lap and he would use his private part to rub against mine. And he used to tell me that I was the reason why these things were happening to me. Obviously, prior to that, my mom never told me about a sexual, don't watch any movie like that, kiss it, close your eyes, don't do this. So I didn't know that these things exist. Oh, okay. So then from there, different people in the house were trying to touch me, do <coughs> things to me, and they would always tell me it was me. So I grew up feeling like something was wrong with me, that I was possessed. So when some, a guy looks at me, I'm like, oh, no. It's me. So when things go wrong, it was me. When I went to a relationship and the guy was abusing me, he would tie me up and do stuff to me. I just felt it was me. So when I met a guy that was good, a God kind of guy, healthy guy, I just was not ready for it. Yeah. I used to get angry. I used to, you know, crave for what things that were wrong. What you were going yeah, and I used to crave for things that were wrong. Yeah. That, that I, I can't even say. You know, but when I, give, when I came back to Christ and gave my life to Christ again and was in the process of getting healed, there are times where the thoughts will come. And I remember praying to God and said, why do I still feel this way? Why do I still think? Why do I still feel irritated? I look at myself in the mirror, I still feel, ugh. But the Lord said, because you, you still think you are that person. You need to understand that you are new in Christ. That person is dead. You need to continue confessing that this person that is here is a new person, the whole person. And the more you think about these things, even when the devil tries to bring wrong feelings to you, the more you constantly believe that you are whole, complete, holy, blameless, beautiful. Yes. Even when those things come, you'll be able to withstand it. So it's how you think, really. You have to change your thoughts. Okay, I'm not, I used to be a drug addict. I used to, you know, I, I, maybe I've done this. I've done abortions. I've done this. People will tell you, you're useless. You're this. But from when you, you now know who you are, you need to hold on to that truth. You need to hold it. You need to hold on to it that this is who I am now. I used to be that before. It doesn't matter. But who I am now is what matters because God sees me like that. And I choose to see myself like that. So that's what I'm you know, when you talk about pain, God forgives and forgets. But you as an individual, you forgive, but you will still remember certain things. It's only that we don't retaliate the pain to others. But then the pain you have, it's you to deal with it. No one else can deal with the pain in you. As she was saying, you know, when you have pain, there are certain steps that you need to take. How is your devotion with God? If you are devoted to God, if you spend more time with God, that pain will definitely come to an end. There's always a process. After a certain period of time, the pain goes because you've given yourself fully to God. So most of us, we keep the pain. We keep referring to the things that happen. And because of that, we end up, you know, like 
igniting the pain again. When you look at a person, you think, okay, they are more or less like the one who hit me yesterday. So what we need to do, as the Bible says, is, you know, you don't need to be conformed to the world where they say, okay, I'm hating and I'll hate. For us, we need just to keep renewing our mind with the word of God. The more you renew your mind, the more pain gets released. You know, it's not a, a one-off thing, but it takes a bit of time. Keep on doing, keep on confessing, and keep on releasing yourself. So you don't need to live in condemnation. Don't condemn yourself. The more you condemn yourself, the more pain continues to be within you. But if you say, you know what, yes, this happened, but I'm no longer the same person. I'm not going to maintain. Otherwise, you'll be keeping the pain in you. And immediately something small happens, it just triggers that pain again. So we need to release the pain. Um, so I'm not I'm not religious. Um, so I've I've used other techniques to overcome um, my feelings and and emotions. Um, one of the things that I've I've found very helpful is something called mindfulness um, and acceptance commitment therapy. Um, and these techniques were originally thought of for people who were to, been diagnosed with terminal illnesses. So helping them to accept what was happening and to, to be able to, to sit to deal with that. So the idea is that these things are happening and they're uncomfortable feelings or they're, they're painful emotions. Um, there's physical pain there as well. Um, and this has now been transferred to people in, with um, who use substances, who battle, you know, battling with um, addiction um, and also um, mental health issues um, so it's a kind of um, uh, meditation you, you sort of go into that sort of state but it's about being totally aware of, of how you are feeling and actually it's okay to be feeling like that you know just to be comfortable and to be able to sit with those feelings and it just it helps you to overcome that and and to to you know feel a lot better about yourself yeah one thing um that I know is um dealing with something you're going through. Um, my mum was watching um, opera one time and she was like, it's good to understand that you've been through that. Don't try and hide that you went through that. Face it and say, okay, yeah, I went through that problem. Yeah, and then when you face that, then accept that, okay, fine, it happened. But now what's the process of moving on? I think that's where we get stuck, accepting that yeah, it happened to me. Because when you accept that it happened to you, you can finally get the mindset to move on from that specific thing or tra tragedy that happened to you. So I think <sighs> sitting down and reflecting, like, okay, fine, this happened. How can I move on? What help can I get to move on? Who can I speak to to move on? Because sometimes you, you don't have people to speak to. You can want to just have the shoulder to cry on and be like, okay, guys, this is what I went through. I just want to release my emotions. Who do I speak to? Who can be there? And who can be trustworthy to hold my information and not spread it across to other people? Because trust is a big thing within our society as well. Ladies trusting each other can be very difficult because I can tell you one thing and then the next time I hear it from that side and I'm like, how did it get there? You know, how, how, how can we... we have that trust within ourselves how can I you know do you have anybody you trust to that extent that you can tell your secrets and you know in your know that that secret will be kept by that person do you yeah. or do you find it easy to trust um I, I, I find it I find it easy to trust I'm very fortunate to have a very um close circle of friends <coughs> and also there's such a good relationship with my mum um so yeah, I am. I am a, a very trusting person. Yeah. Sometimes too much so. I have been bitten before for that. Um, <laughs> but I also like to think that you know my friends do come and talk to me about things, um, and you know I, I do listen to them and don't yeah, spread yeah. their. That's true. Well, I have, I've been my show friends that when you tell one thing, it will be the you're trying to tell them about one person, like, oh my god, this person did this to me, and then before you know it, that person's calling you, What did you say about me? I'm like, How did you know? And then you call that friend, I'm like, No, it wasn't me, I didn't tell them. So it <laughs> can be in different um, issues. Do we have any questions? People that want to, um, to be part of the, the talk? Um, Do you want to stand up? 
take a seat. <laughs> well, you want me to stand up? Yes, please. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's been a wide topic and a very important topic, which um, for me to start picking and commenting on each topic that has been mentioned would probably take the whole the whole day but uh, those are issues that that you've been addressing those are everyday issues uh, me also being a mother and I've got a daughter who is much much older than you everything you were saying they just I was saying oh they've been on the phone and sharing these things together because um, yeah, I've I'm, I'm guilty in another way in the other things that you've been bringing up and uh, I'm also victorious in the other areas that like mom representing yes. me as a mom as well was addressing mm. but um, you know taking the mask off is very is very important <coughs> most of us we want to pl play the celebrity thing to say everything has been well as you see me smiling, as you see me looking like this, it's been, it's been a smooth road. But taking the mask off and bringing reality to other women, I think it's very important. Uh, especially those who are also bringing up kids. And um, to say, it's so hard. You don't know when you when to say yes, you don't know when to say no. And you don't know whether your no was the appropriate at that time. And whether it's acceptable at that time, you don't know. And also, what we've gone through has made us, you know, I really want to identify with um, other sister, you know, the things that we've gone through ourselves. We are so frightened that we say, God help me. If anything else, I would never want my daughter to walk that, that road. And I always think probably uh, I'm stronger than them. Maybe that's why I managed to sail through. But then you think, Poor and it's poor Angela, poor and it's, will they be able and poor room will they be able to get through what I went through? So as a result, we become so protective, probably even overprotective. Yeah. I want to check where they've been and what they've been doing. And uh, if I leave them in the house, I'm just thinking, are they still in the house? Are they still in the house? And uh, you, I want to ring on the landline, not on the mobile phone, because yes. in the mobile phone they can say, oh, mama, I'm in the bedroom, or they are even in the middle of town. But if I ring on the landline, mm -hmm. you know, it's all those thoughts that go through us, yeah. but um, it's taking off the mask to say, yeah, yeah we need to help one another Thank even you. as we walk on this road. Thank you. We're just going to get um, just one and a half questions, <laughs> because our time is running short. Okay, we'll just get two, two more people. Thank you very much. Um, I've got a half a comment, so I'm gonna make it very quick. Um, I think uh, my experience with uh, mothers and girls, I've, I've only got sons, okay. so I can't really speak as a mother of daughters. I'm yeah. more a mother of sons. But I think yeah. one of the damaging things uh, in relationships, particularly between a mentor and the one that is mentored, Okay. Um, is a lack of transparency. Yes. On the part yes. of the mentor. You're right. You're right. Because if a mentor is perfect and is mentoring you, mm. when you fail, you really feel that you failed. Yeah. Yeah. And you yeah. can't get up because you think yeah. you've done something that is uh, not done. Mm -hmm. But if your mentor is honest with you and tells you that you know what. In life you fall. Yes. I've had a few challenges myself. Mm -hmm. But look at me now. I have wow. had failures wow. in my life. Wow. I have fallen there, there, there. Yes. But, but I got me. Me. So even if you fall, mm. it's not the end of the world. Yes. You can get up and yeah. still become something like me. Yes. I think that's very encouraging. That's very thank you. But that we is. miss that because at yes. the end of the day we're trying to be <coughs> things that don't exist. Mm -hmm. We are mm -hmm. trying to be like our mentors who are absolutely perfect, hundred percent. Yes. And we fall short of the mark and we get destroyed. Yeah. So yeah. I think as mentors or if you're a mother or anything, mm -hmm. be a little transparent mm -hmm. whoever wow. you're in charge with. Thank you so much. So it's about being transparent. And Oh, wow, that's really powerful. Because sometimes we fail to tell people that yes, I dropped there, I failed, I failed there, I got up, 
it encourages us as young people as well to know that even if you fail or you fall, you can still get back up. Or sometimes we tend to stay down because we're thinking this is it for us. We have, this is the end for us. But thank you so much for that. Have you got another question or another encouragement? Okay. Yeah, um, I just wanted to ask, so how do you get to the point where you're comfortable enough to take off your mask and how do you take it off? Wow. <laughs> Anyone want to answer that before I go? <laughs> Um, if you have to take off your mask at what point do you want to take it off it's up to you because you have to say to yourself when will I be real who would want to live in the shoe of another person if you are a size 5 if I give you my size 6 will you walk properly so the, the mask is there you make a decision to say, you know what, I've been under this mask for quite a while now. I'm deciding to be the real me. So it's at that point where you make a transition and say, yes, I've lived like this, but now I want to be the real me. It's like a girl who pretends that they are not naughty, but they are naughty. Obviously, you are living a lie. And no one will know except yourself. So come to a realization of saying, you know what, I'm fed up of being, you know, a hypocrite, if we use the religious <laughs> terms. I don't want to pretend in my living. I want to be the real me. If you want to be chatting, chat. Don't pretend to keep quiet when you're a chatter. Just be, re be the real you. And that goes with us as mothers. Some of us, we are too protective, but we were so careless. Isn't it? So be real and say, you know what? All what I'm doing, it's because I was naughty, but you are naughtier than me. But I want to help you. Okay, on me is the how. How? Because um, I believe that for you to get healed, you have to get to know more about God's love. I know that's all I know. I know people say you're so religious, but that's all I know. You need to grow in the knowledge of God's love for you. Paul was speaking, he said, I pray that you be strengthened with might in your inner man. And what he was talking about was, I want you to be strengthened, how? By knowing how much he loves you. That's what he was talking about. The more you're rooted and grounded in how much God loves you, the more you're strengthened in your flesh, in your mind. You're able to release. Now, now I don't have to pretend to someone. I don't have to lie that I went to the best school. I don't have to wear something else. I don't have to try to speak in a particular way. Because now I know there's someone that loves me. So just, just, just taking off the mask because why? I now know, okay, I'm free to be me because I'm already accepted. Yes. I'm already loved. So even if you think I'm not, you know, cool enough, I'm not beautiful enough, someone thinks I am. So the more you grow in the knowledge of God's love, that's a relationship with God. It's not by how many scriptures you know or how many, what you do in church. It's a personal relationship. The more you grow to know, okay, this guy that says he loves me, how much? Or he says I'm precious. Oh really? He says I'm beautiful. Really? You you begin to grow. You know you begin you you, you begin to be stronger and stronger. You know so you're able to say you know what? This is who I am. Really. I think for um, me growing up, it was very difficult to actually know my own identity. Wow. Um, so for a long long time, I just followed my music that my friends liked. I did what I, my friends liked doing. And it wasn't until I was in my early 20s that I actually found out who I was and what I enjoyed doing wow. and who, you know, who I wanted to be, what I wanted to wear, how I wanted to do my hair. Um, and, yeah, so that, you know, taking off your mask sometimes isn't um, a sort of process that you you can sort of make an actual decision to do. It's a process. It's more of a process, yeah. 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 It's Because I think you also need somebody to take off your mask, you must be surrounded by people you trust. Because you can't just take it off and they show everybody your true colors and then they go and then they misuse that. So you need to find out who do you trust? Can those people you're taking off your mask to show your real self to? Can they hold your secret? Can you share your story and then they will help you and not laugh at you? Because sometimes you can take off your mask and they will laugh at you. And maybe they've suffered that many times at the point that they just would rather remain with the mask because they laughed at me at one point and they made me feel like, you know what, I'm unworthy. 
So that's why many tend to then want to rewear that mask. But I think finding out who can you trust and can they withhold your secret and can they help you come out of that situation as well. One more question, please. Oh, okay. Ooh, don't worry, I'll fit you in. <laughs> Um, you're talking about sharing experiences and building trust within each other, like as friends, as women. Um, but how can you start to share it? Because there's a fear of judgment kind of thing. Um, and sometimes people find it hard to share with others what they've been through, what they've done, because they're afraid of being judged by whoever they're saying that to. So how can us as listeners not overtly judge people and how can we not feel judged <laughs> um, if you want to know who can tr who to trust you know trust is a very sensitive word if I look at anyone in the room I can't trust you because we haven't shared information or we haven't been together for a while so looking at somebody, I can't trust them at the first sight. Mm. It, it, it takes time for you to know, okay, this one. Some we've been with them for five years, but still we can't trust them. Mm -hmm. Why? Because of maybe their character. Yeah. Maybe the way they talk. Mm. They don't stop talking. So you know, okay, <laughs> if I tell them, definitely, because they speak so much, they'll end up including me in their conversation. <laughs> so you need to know the people that you can confide in. In a society like this one, we've got who we call the counselors. But in the church setup, we've got trustworthy men and women of God. You are, you are 100% assured if a man of God leaks your information, then they didn't do their pastoral ethics well. Because we are trained to say, when a a person comes, a counselee comes, whatever they tell you, you die with it. You tell it to God and God alone. It's for your ears and for your ears alone. So trusting somebody that you can share with information, you need to know them very well. You need to have a relationship with them. But despite you having a relationship, it's not everyone that you have a relationship with that you can trust with some information. Some people, they can't hear something and keep it. So it's all depending on us. And, and I think the other bit is, you know, I love what a proverb says. It says, your children will rise up and call you blessed. Is there a mother in the house whom, even though I'm not your biological mother, can you call me blessed? Because wow. if I'm blessed of God, then I'll be able to hide what you tell me because I want to see you be like Christ wow. so some of us we need to be trustworthy mm -hmm. for the young girls to remove their masks wow. Wow. Okay, I had a question over here I'm going to take this question right there and that will be my last question I was brought up in Africa and a mother I think the major challenge is trying to adapt to the society we are in the kind of young women we are raising and inputting the values of Christ in them and allowing them to be children, not from the background I, I came from, but through the eyes of where we are, without contradicting the word of God in them. I liked what you said about being real. I'm a mother of three, not perfect. I was paying the ouchie as well as we were sharing. However, I've vowed to be as open as possible to the girls. Yes, yes, that's very important. Because if they are going to discover stuff about yeah. me behind my back, then they are going to, it's going to undo everything I've told them in my life. And the issue about having a mask, I like what you said, Mama. It's not everybody who is supposed to know the business, about my business. But they are specific individuals we should share. And if the daughter is, like they said, brave enough to share stuff they are dealing with, then us, I find it a must confess, in the church circles, because we already are molding 
the, what we want to see in the girl. Because as soon as they say, I did that, you are five miles yeah, and yeah, running. Yeah. And then where are they going to go? Exactly. Because when they come bleeding, yes, we should be yes, ready yes. to come with a bandage. Exactly. To put it, mm. rather than to poke it first, yeah. <laughs> before then you try to put a bandage. Mm. Because it's going to be too late. Mm. So I was charged, I don't know who said it now, but somebody said that sharing it with, with you, with the church, and then they, they then condemned. I, I, it's, I, I would love as us, especially as mothers, we've had our perfect days and our bad days, but sometimes we concentrate on our perfect days yes. and forget our bad days. Mm. So when somebody comes with a bad day, mm -hmm. may we have that grace to handle the bad day with love. Exactly. And help the girl, because as soon as they can't be handled in church, mm -hmm. example is right there, she'll run outside yeah. and they'll handle it well yes. in their way yeah. and then we have lost a child but i'm just i'm just saying as mothers especially as girls i like this girls let's talk as, <laughs> as girls because we are we are the, we are the people who who are dangerous to each other oh yes we are the most dangerous to each yes. other because i feel insecure mm. with the girls but I, we have to be secure with, with each, each other, other yeah. then we can build Yes. and have a more coherent, our girls will learn yes. from that. They'll know if they tell mom so and so, it's stuck with them, but she will build that girl. And talk about the sensitive stuff. I talk about sex with my girls. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes, if they that's can't, needed. <laughs> yep. If they can't hear it from me, they are going to learn it from somewhere. So we talk about it, not openly, but in a way, that they know it's okay to talk about it. About mm. boyfriends, we have to talk about it mm. because they are going to have one. Mm. Taro is 18, yeah. they are going to have one. So if we, we bridge that barrier, the African mentality, yeah. where we had aunties and them who could talk with the girls, we don't have them now. Yeah. The, our aunties are the TVs yeah. and they are saying the wrong stuff. Mm. Yeah. Thank mm. you. Thank you, thank you so much. Wow, because I'm closing up and I'm rounding off. Thank you for sharing your story. That was very brave because not many people are willing to say what they went through. And you doing that and just coming out in the open and just showing us your nakedness. And then this is what I went through. Thank you because I'm sure it helps other women in there. Thank you so much for being brave enough to sit with us and speak to us and share your story as well and let us know how to deal with things because we needed to hear it from your point of view as well. And thank you so much, Mother Bishop, for just allowing yourself. I know you're very busy. And you should sit with us and speak to us and just tell us about your story, advise us and tell us how to become better women. And I want to thank you everybody for coming and, and being with us today. I hope you learned something. I mean, this is just the beginning. We just wanted to give you a snippet, like something, something small to show you that this is where we're, this is what we're starting. We're going to bigger heights and, you know, we'll be doing more of this and in being incorporated in other um, events. And we'll be also hosting our own events. But this was just the beginning to just show you guys that we really want to help other women. We really want to be our sister's keeper. We really want to encourage women to become better. We want to build a platform from where to come and grow and use it for their advantage because if I can make it, you can make it. If I can make it to the top, also you can. So I want to show you how I'm making it and you show me how you're making it and removing our mask and just showing each other that you know what I've been hurt sometimes. I went through maybe it could be abortion. There are so many young ladies going through abortion like it's drinking water. And, you know, and there's nobody rising up to say, you know what, I went through this, this is how it hurt me, this is what it makes you become. Because you become a better person, you know, and just to share your story, any chance given, share your story. Don't withhold your information. And of course, like we say, find the people you can trust to withhold your information. You don't want to share it to just anybody. So, wherever you go, wherever you come from, if you, especially if you're a mother, if you have young ladies coming to speak to you, it just shows that they saw something within you that they can trust. So don't close that door for you to become too motherly. Yeah, the motherly one that's very defensive, very, you can't do this, just open up and just talk to her like a girlfriend. And you know, that's what we need. And for us young ladies, you know, 
find someone to talk to, find someone who can advise you. Because as you're growing up, you think you know it all, but really, we need help, you know. I remember I was told something when I went to this youth conference. They said, within your circle of friends, you need somebody you can look up to and somebody who can also look up to you. Because when you look up to somebody, it means they can help you. But then when you have somebody looking up to you, you can't mess up. Because you feel like I'm in this position where I can't mess up. Somebody else is looking up to me. So look up to somebody and have someone else to look up to you. So you can't mess up and help somebody. Be a woman who helps other women. Okay? Be your sister's keeper. And more is coming. I thank you so much. I'm very honored to have you over. I want to thank you, Sister Esther, for coming. You know, she's a business person. She's actually got an old magazine that she um, is called... Um, DIY, is it DIY Girls Magazine, right? Yes, that's what she does. She's an amazing, I'm just so honored to have it. I wasn't sure if you were coming. I was like, maybe, but thank you so much. And everybody, thank you for coming and attending. And I just want to say, have a fantastic rest of your day. And if any questions later, you know, we've got the rest of the day, so we'll speak. But for now, be blessed. Thank you. And bye. <laughs>